Welcome to day two. I'm Mariko from Web Developer Relation Team at Chrome. This is a bit different from the usual Chrome Dev Summit session, which we mostly focus on by platform technology. But this time, I'm going to share how we've been working this year. Just as a reminder before we start, I will mention ongoing public health crisis, as well as natural disasters and many more social movements for change. And for me, and for I'm sure for many of you too, it is very emotionally charged topic. So please be mindful in comment section. This year prompted a lot of change in the way we look at current status quo, and we all needed to adapt to change really quick. And I find myself talking to my friend often and asking them how other teams are dealing with this year. So I wanted to share with you how we've been adapting in hope that you also find those conversations interesting. Let's wind back to March. At the beginning of March, when the threat of COVID-19 in the United States was getting more serious, small group of us was supposed to have in-person hack week in Boston because we were in the middle of building tooling report our new information site we released in June. Just a week before our scheduled hack week, international travel became out of questions. But we couldn't just not do hack week. We had a deadline to hit, and everybody already cleared the calendar. So we decided to try having hack week virtually. Our team is split into different time zones. So we tried to have being in the same room atmosphere for a few hours a day when all of us are working together. How this works is that we created a video chat room where everybody can join. And most of the time, we mute ourselves and heads down writing code on our own. And occasionally, somebody unmutes and share their playlist. And when you have questions or things that need to get discussed, you unmute and say, hey, what do you think of doing this? And at that moment, everybody can start discussing and resolve that issue right at the moment. So this setup worked surprisingly well. And this virtual conference room became a frequent activity in our team beyond that hack week, especially early on in our work from home journey. There's also been more intentionally organized non-work virtual events too, like game time, dedicated time to just chat, and of course, we can't forget pet photo sharing thread. Other thing that moved to virtual setting is conference and events. And this was a big change for us because presenting and attending an in-person event is a huge part of what we do as a team. Since we couldn't gather in person anymore, we shifted to virtual event. But it wasn't just like record a session and upload it to the internet, right? Usually when we shoot these videos for YouTube, we are incredibly privileged to have access to studio space with professional lighting and camera equipment. But now everybody had to record a session from their own home. So how it works, including this video shoot, is that I'm on a video call with producers and directors screen sharing camera remote app on my laptop, which is connected to my camera, so that they can make sure all of my recording settings are collect. This is how a video gets made these days. And I just want to mention that we were incredibly lucky to have support of a production team and video editors to be able to switch to remote recordings and virtual conference setup so smoothly. It is not just video production. There's comment moderators, person who prepare closed caption and translations, and many, many more work goes into putting events like this. Going beyond working virtually, this year really highlighted how critical the web is to stay connected, stay informed, and do things that keeps our daily life going. Right? I've seen countless online spreadsheets to track critical resource needs, volunteer signups, I've seen my local butcher and bakery adapt online order form and payment system, sometimes overnight. And many of us developers had hours to do something and started building. Like 
helpmainstreet.com, which let you find local business and buy gift cards or order online while local economies slow down. Or Not911, which is a PWA that help you find alternative resource to resolve community issues without calling the police. And there are many, many more of these. But of course, everything happened in such intensity that not everything went smooth. And people experienced a lot of frustration on the web too. In response to COVID-19 pandemic, our team has put together a list of helpful resources in one page, from how to diagnose a performance issue to how to add structural data so important announcements are properly surfaced on search. It was originally put together in response to the public health crisis, but I think same guys apply to any project trying to address people's critical needs. After all, good web development practice is appreciated not only in the regular time, but also in the time of needs. And I bring this up not to say, hey, our team knows the best practices, no, but to remind us all, all that doing good web development helps people. I'm based in New York City, an epicenter of global pandemic, and one of the major US cities where people marched on the street for racial justice. And while everything else is going on, people around me were building something to help others. But I was at lost. I didn't know what I could do, and I felt powerless. And I still feel, feel lost. And in case you are also feeling that way, I would like to remind us that what we do day to day as a web developer could be critical action to somebody else. That logo inform you spend time building or that accessibility feature you added or that bit of performance tuning you did do contribute to somebody else's life getting a little easier. I'd like to end this session with a little bit of a story about how we are reacting to call for equality, particularly for Black Plus members of the community. When trying to address systemic issues, it is not just do one thing and fix everything. There are so many things we need to work on, and we are working on many projects, which I hope to share with you soon. But I want to call out one particular point about language and words. Because even in the most well-meaning team, language we use can still hurt somebody and contribute to systemic racism. So this year, we started to take more direct action in changing the language we use. We started search non-inclusive language in our code base. We started putting inclusive language reminders on our pull requests and starting to part away from master branch convention that we've been using. And we are rewriting team's mission statement to put our value into words, clarifying our core values and what we care beyond just technical achievements. This work is just starting now, but I cannot wait to share with you in the future. I'm particularly invested in this topic because I am based in US and I live in New York City, so it's my reality. But I know around the globe, many of you are participating in call for different cause, for disaster relief, for justice, for democracy, and safety, and many more. And our team certainly try to be informed, but it's hard to know as much as the person who is actively participating in it. So if you see something we do as out of place or stepping on something, please call us out. And if you need particular help, please let us know. I know this session was a bit unusual for us, but I hope we keep having these conversations so that it doesn't feel unusual anymore next year. Thank you for being here, and I look forward to chatting with you in comment section. Enjoy your session stay. <music>